silver, silver sulfidine impregnated um, foam. Yeah. And then you don't want to contaminate it, right? This is sterile on right, the inside. Right, the inside. So when you take it out, you mm -hmm. remove that, and you set this on top of the wound. Mm -hmm. And then you trace the, because you don't want it to go beyond the wound edges, right? Mm -hmm. It's very important not to go beyond the wound edges because you'll, um, you'll macerate mm -hmm. the edges. So what you do is you draw. Cut this out. This is sterile, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can put it on your sponge and, then and use this as your template. That's absolutely very good mm -hmm. technique. Yeah. I like that. I've and that way you don't contaminate that. the wound mm -hmm. and you don't contaminate the sponge either. Can you tell them, maybe if you can get what I'm getting at, the other technique when you're cutting your foam, what you don't want to do? Oh, you don't want to leave any stragglers at all here. There has to be a clean edge. And maybe you guys should take the foam and try to cut it okay. because it's the only way you're going to understand. Mm -hmm. And on top of that... Uh, so I'll use your template, for okay. instance. <clears throat> so you can cut it. Yeah. So if I'm cutting it like this, am I going to cut through like this? I would cut the template and then I would stick it on top ah. of there. And then in case, just in case something goes wrong with the wound back and you don't have an extra sponge, just use half of it and that way you have the other half. Hey, okay. I'm conservative. I know <laughs> things really? go wrong. Well, I like she it. knows what it's like working <laughs> in the facility. Yep. Things go wrong all the time. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> Smart. Oh, mm -hmm. That's really good. And it's great for those real trickly shaped wounds, too. Right, especially if they're like wound eight shaped or mm -hmm. sideways. Protect your peri wound skin. You can use some kind of cleansing agent. Uh, what, what's a common cleansing agent that you could use to cleanse the peri wound skin? No, okay, that would work. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want normal saline? We have normal. Or you saline. can, or you can use um, after you clean it. You can use skin prep. Okay, that's what. Yeah, you would lay down a piece of drape. You won't see this in a lot of the example videos mm -hmm. that KCI has, but this is a technique that I've seen pretty common. Mm -hmm. Deb, I don't know if you use it yourself or, or you, um, Michelle, but Sorry? you yeah, lay down sometimes. like a window pane. Mm -hmm. around the peri wound skin to protect it just in case like you were saying if you're a little big and it goes over so you're not causing maceration or anything like that but again the best practice is to cut so that it's inside the wound margins of your wound bed with the foam remember your quarter size hole so keep that visual in mind mm -hmm. like here's another step where you can maybe use a pen or something to draw the mm -hmm. hole use your scissors to cut it most people kind of do a pinching method like this. Mm -hmm. Just don't cut yourself because then you need a wound back too. <laughs> so just kind of snip under and then you can, you know, cut it mm -hmm. to where it's a decent size. And... Okay, so for the canister, is everyone familiar with how to remove the mm -hmm. canister? A little tricky, but you've got the little safety release here. Just press down, you'll hear that click. Mm -hmm. It comes right off. Inside, I forget what's in there, but it helps the exudate to turn to a more gelatinous. Yeah. So it's not slushing around. But then to attach, you just want to insert that arm. Hear the click. It's good. And you're set. The clicks are all so weak. Yeah. Yeah, I kept, I was playing with it last night. I was like, did I hear it? Did I hear it? I would just pull back on it to make sure it was in solidly. Okay. Um, First, starting at the bottom of the screen, you have your help button. So you can go there, you have operating, well, the little sorry, sorry. glow allows you to change languages mm -hmm. if you want. There's about seven, eight different languages there that you can use. In operating instructions, it just goes through very pared down instructions mm -hmm. on cleaning, things like that. So you can take a look at those if you want. Um, I think it also has some very basic troubleshooting directions for different alarms and alerts that you may come across. The same thing that's going to be in your mm -hmm. back therapy guide, but just not as detailed. Contact information is obviously uh, you know, uh, troubleshooting uh, number for KCI. Um, patient mode is a mode that just has less um, clinical options for the patient. I think it doesn't allow the patient to access things like um, canister changes, dressing mm -hmm. changes, 
Um, what else? Um, adjusting the negative pressure right. amount. Basically, it makes it more simple so that they can't mess anything up in there. But right now, we're working in clinician mode. Okay, that's pretty much it. You can also lock the screen by pressing the little lock button. And then it's almost like a code that you have to put in. This helps to ensure that the patient doesn't Doesn't actually bump or touch it and Mm -hmm. turn something off. Basically, you press one and two again, and then it knows that you mean to uh, make the screen accessible. Mm -hmm. So you can exit out of that. Let's see, let's go into utilities (coughs) next. You have time and date that you can set here. It's on a 24 hour clock. Not sure if you can change that to a 12 hour. Uh, Region settings, you can change from millimeters of mercury to other settings. You can change the date settings from month, day, year to day, month, year. But since we're not in Europe, we'll stick Mm -hmm. with month, day, year. And you can adjust the brightness of the screen. Of course, again, more for the comfort of the patient. Probably helps with battery life too, but at nighttime that can be a little annoying. The AC light button also too um, determines whether the the backlit screen stays on. Exit out of that. And then the main thing is going to be in your therapy settings. So it just gives you some information. You can click next. Settings is where you can adjust your pressure. So this is probably one of the main areas you're gonna go to depending on what the physician has prescribed for the Mm -hmm. patient. 125 is the normal or basic that most are prescribed at. It goes up to 200 and you just use the up and down plus and minus click arrows all the way down to 25 Mm -hmm. millimeters of mercury for pressure. So we'll leave it at 125, you can exit out. Continuous is an option where it's just going to give ongoing negative pressure therapy at whatever the um, doctor has prescribed. It also has an intermittent setting. So here you can set for how long you want negative pressure to be engaged. It's set automatically at five minutes and the off time is for two minutes. And maybe right, KCI maybe incorporated it over time, like they, hey, we found this works good yeah. for this, but so, I... Yeah, I so know. I've done it and it's worked. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. I can't give you the mm-hmm. physiologically yeah. definition, terminology or whatever, but it works. Mm-hmm. So again, you can adjust how long it's on for and how long it's off, the intermittent time. And then the intensity. Intensity only means the drawdown of the... Um, dressing. It doesn't mean how hard it's sucking or anything like that. So again, because pain is subjective, it's what a person feels, you can adjust the intensity to drawing down slow at a medium speed or fast. Oh, I didn't okay. know they had that. Yeah, that's all that, that is. Is that prescribed by the yeah. physician, the intensity? I no. would always just say, get ready. On a clinician's <laughs> get ready, job. here we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just if you could use a, as long as it's clean, oh, okay. the, me, the minimum oh, amount of the size quarter. of a quarter. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So you could go a little bit over. Yeah. You're just going to pinch it up. You're just going to cut. Yeah. Cut, yeah. Off. Yeah. cut yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Just go around. Yeah. It's okay if you cut this much. Yeah. What I'm saying is, were they innocent? Or were they the intended? There we go. Does it have to be really, really neat? No, it does not. Uh, yeah. As long as it covers the um, entire perimeter of the suction sensor, yeah, yeah. It covers it, which is this right here. Wonderful. And that's it. So once that's done, <coughs> you can kind of measure it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So you're going to take up number one, mm-hmm. place it right on top, right there, wonderful, I'm just going to flatten it out, flatten it out, and then you're going to go ahead and remove number two, which is this one right here, mm-hmm. you just kind of like bend it a little bit, cool, yeah, and then you just kind of press it down, press it down, and number three, and you just take up number three, and it just kind of goes over. Wonderful. And once that's done, and if you want to clamp it, clamp it here, you're going to connect it to your vacuum, which is this one right here. So now it goes to prime it, like the, the rest of you have to flush it with or not? No, no, you don't have to flush it. Okay. 
So you just go here and you kind of put the two little prongs inside and you twist this way. So we know that it's on. And then we just turn on the machine. We turn it on. But it's showing that um, there's a leak, but there's no leak. We just have to unlock this. Yeah. Right? Like positive pressure? Like she wants to have this reversed. Yeah. Okay, so you can clamp it. I did. You can stop the negative. Go ahead and hit off. She wants to turn it off. Mm -hmm. And then twist, disconnect. Actually, you could clamp it from this side. But go ahead and pull it off. And she's, <laughs> and she's saving so much money because she's not buying, she's not using a new one. Got it. She's cutting cool. pieces. And then we'll put negative Perfect. pressure again. Perfect. There you go. Yeah, just put the knob and turn back on. And I'm not wearing it. We're pretending it works. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, both pumps are open. No, but okay. you want it? it? Wonderful. Very nice. Great. Very nice. Thank what you. What if you're not going to use it? Now, um, you want to take off the so white the one first. I use these as oh, yeah, so you're gonna, yeah, you're going to be very oh, careful okay. with that because that will could wrinkle up. You have a leak. Trying to create a leak. Fix this right, leak right here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is perfect. This one gives us a little. I'm going to grab it. So that's a leak. Mm -hmm. For some leak reason, right? a leak happened, right? Yeah. So I'm going to find out where the leak is. Uh -huh. You see how you go? Oh, you found your leak. Now how do you fix it? I'm going to put this right here. You don't need more foam. Can I just put tape? Just more more drink. Oh, just to patch it. It's like a flat tire. You just patch it. You're good. Did you? Bless you. I'm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> To repair a leak. Repair a leak. Repairing a leak. Do you know where it's leaking? Yeah. Oh, bless you. I was going to say, in this video, you'll be in this area. So the next step would be to put the area. Yeah, right. Okay. I don't know that. Very nice job. Do I need to like a See how simple you didn't have to see tear it up and all that stuff? Oh, but still, there's more leak. Low, low. There we go. So it just takes time for it to repair. It's a smaller machine, so maybe it takes a little bit longer. So you just put more drink. Do you want to show them how to do a mushroom? That would be a good one to do a mushroom. Actually, the on button. Let's see if it draws down. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Turns into a little raisin. <laughs> and here's my cord. And then you always want to check your leakage threshold and make sure you're in good range. Is low good enough? Yeah, that's perfect. As long as it's not, not a bad line. Exactly. Mm -hmm.